If you've been watching my streams, you'd have seen that I've been winning a lot, and I recently hit 8k for the first time. Was that enough internet points? Oh. We've done it. 8,000 internet points. Wow. Yeah, 8k isn't too high nowadays, I know, but it's a big deal for me, especially since only about 3 weeks ago I was 7.1k. With the power of PMA and a few strong heroes, I managed to climb a lot in a short amount of time. Today, I want to share with you some of the most important things I learned during this climb. My hope is that you can take some of these points and incorporate them into your own games and hopefully help you improve and gain MMR as well. As someone whose starting MMR was 2.6k, let me tell you why hitting 8k now is such a big deal for me. Back when I used to play a lot, I grinded up to 7.5k playing support. In those days, many years ago, 7.5k got me a rank of around 30 back when the medals looked like this. Anyone else remember that? Eventually, I lost the fire to grind MMR and didn't play much for many years. I still love playing Dota. I just mainly played party queue with friends or until recently, I spent a lot of my free time on other things like making YouTube videos. But recently, I started playing ranked again and I've been having a lot of fun. But I was rusty. I could tell my laning phase was weak, my map movements were slow, my item and skill builds were out of date. This is why when I recently started playing again, I dropped from 7.5k to 7.1k. And one of the first things that helped me gain MMR was... Venomancer. I recently made a whole video talking about how strong Venno support is, so go check that out if you haven't. Although I did win a lot with Venno, and I do think he's stronger than a lot of people think right now, the real point here is, I found a subset of heroes that I'm really comfortable on that I think are also strong in the current meta of my bracket, and I mostly only played those heroes. The three heroes were Wisp, of course, and Venno as 5, and if I needed to play 4, I went with Bounty Hunter. I dabbled with a couple of different heroes here and there, but I mainly stuck to these three. I think if played properly, these heroes can be really good and annoying to deal with. But the main thing with mostly only playing 3 heroes was that it allowed me to focus on relearning all of the things I was rusty on. If I'm playing heroes I know pretty well and am comfortable on, I can use my brain power during the game to focus more on how to play the lane better or where on the map I should be playing at, instead of how to use my spells properly. So if you want to gain MMR or even brush off the rust like I was doing, I'd suggest finding about 3 heroes that are strong in your bracket or in the meta in general, stick to those, and learn to play them pretty well. Having high versatility is great, but I think especially for support players who often have to pick during the first pick phase of ranked games, having a few heroes you can blindly pick and comfortably play into anything is really impactful. Next is something I brushed on a bit already, but I really just got back into my groove. I started to get a much better idea every game of what my role is for my team and what I should be doing next, and I was seeing large improvements in the areas that I knew I was lacking in, like the laning phase. I spent some time watching high ranked players to see things like how they manage blocking and unblocking pull camps and which item builds to go for. Another huge aspect of this, especially for support, was how to maneuver through the laning phase, specifically the first 7 minutes. As a support, there are so many mini objectives to keep in mind. First couple of waves, manage denying creeps, securing range creeps, checking if your pull camp is blocked, unblocking it, harassing enemies so your carry doesn't get bullied, 3 minute healing lotus, make sure the large camp is blocked so enemies can't pull it, make sure you're still harassing the enemies, 4 minute help mid secure a water rune, stack, pull, help harass, 6 minute healing lotus, but also 6 minute power rune, 7 minutes coming up, be ready to sneak around to steal the enemy's wisdom rune, but also need to make sure you're still harassing. There's a lot to keep in mind. It's a non-stop job. But once I got used to this, everything just started to click and feel much more natural. It's like I'm playing with one eye on the clock and one eye on everything else on my screen. I'm always prepping for the next thing to do. And it's a night and day difference how I feel because of this. Whatever role you play, get a good idea of the general objectives you need to focus on or impact you need to have. If you're playing a good ganking mid like Puck, make sure you have enough resources to gank a side lane when you get your level 6. If you're a really strong laning support like Bane, make sure you're using your resources to contest the enemies in your lane, easing some pressure off of your lane partner. If you can get into a groove of things, knowing what your role is for your team, and you can feel comfortable while playing, it's a lot more likely that you'll perform better. I'd say it's almost like achieving a flow state. You don't even need to think much about what you have to do. You're in the zone, feeling yourself, and getting things done. That helped me a lot.
Next is a trap that I think a lot of people fall into without even realizing it, me included. But once I noticed and made changes to how I approach my pubs, I felt like I was learning so much more from each game. Here's what I'd do. Let's say I played a game and during it, I knew that I made some mistake in my lane. Maybe I was caught out of position and first blooded, or I took too long to unblock my small camp and the enemies got a lot of farm and XP. Whatever it is, I'd almost always feel the impact of these misplays during the game because my game felt harder than it should be. I'd make a mental note of this and recall it after the game, figuring out what I could have done better instead. It didn't have to be this huge chunk of time where I had to go back and analyze every part of the replay either. For me, it was just a couple of minutes, usually while I'm in queue for my next game, where I'd think about what I could have done differently in those moments. This sounds like a simple, maybe inconsequential thing to do, but it made a huge difference for me. Now, if I ever get into a similar situation, I made the mental note of how to better handle it. Maybe against specific heroes, I know not to play too far up when they get their level 2, as they can punish me pretty easily. Or I know to fly out a second sentry after getting the bounty rune money so I can quickly unblock my small camp. By doing this every game, I'm fixing all of these holes in my performance, making my gameplay a lot cleaner and impactful. So after your next game, recall a moment where you know you made a mistake, and think about how it could be avoided in the future. If you feel that it's more helpful to go back into the replay, go ahead, but don't feel like you have to every game. Some mistakes and solutions are more evident than others. Back in the day, I was definitely one of those people who could play 10, even 15 plus games a day easily, often back to back. This isn't healthy for your body or your mental. As I've gotten older, with more responsibilities and less free time, I've come to realize the importance of working on something when you're the most productive or focused on the task. This is why for my recent grind to 8k, I actually didn't play that much. I usually played about 4, occasionally 5 games a day, but not even every day. If my goal is to gain MMR, I should be performing as best as I can when I'm playing. If I'm feeling tired or unfocused, there's no need to keep playing. Dota will be there tomorrow. I'm not here to say that you should only play 4 or 5 games a day. Everyone's different. What you should do is find your limits and listen to them. If you can tell you feel tired after 2 games, maybe just take a break and play more later in the day. Or wait until you get a good night's rest and start again tomorrow. Maybe you can play 10 plus games a day and still feel fully energized and able to perform at your full potential. You just need to make sure you're being honest with yourself and listening to your body. You might try to tell yourself that you're ready for more games, but in reality you know it's not the smartest decision. Dota can be tiring, especially if you're the type of person who's really invested in their games and wants to improve. It's basically constant problem solving for 30, 40, even sometimes 60 plus minutes. Although that's a blast and a huge reason why I love Dota so much, it can definitely be tiring on the mind, especially if you have to deal with unsavory teammates. You can even take a break to play unranked, arcade games, watch replays, or even watch my stream. Find what works best for you, be honest with yourself, and make sure you're taking care of yourself. A healthy you will produce better performance. The last point I have kind of piggybacks off of the last one. I just had fun. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been streaming a lot more, including this climb from 7.1k to 8k, and it's been a blast. What's funny is I initially thought I might intentionally not stream it so I could have 100% focus on my gameplay. But I found that streaming it made the process much more enjoyable, making me perform better. I love chatting with people about my specific game or Dota in general. Having people come in and ask questions or just say hi is really nice, especially getting to recognize and know some frequent viewers. I even ran into someone in my ranked game from my Discord server, and we ended up adding each other and party queuing some ranked games. He helped me win my last game to get 8k. He's a monster on Pudge, no joke. It's also been really fun to run into people in my games that recognize my name from my YouTube videos. They always have nice things to say, which makes me happy. Wait, ZZ, do you have a YouTube channel? Maybe. Hey. <laughs> do you? I think I might watch your channel. Well, you're the guy who does like experiments on like spells and shit. No? <laughs> How does CM ulti actually work? Bruh. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> I enjoy your videos though. I, uh, I watch every single one of them. Thanks. <laughs>
this guy. <laughs> My point isn't that you need to stream or make YouTube videos to have a good time while playing ranked. It's more so that you should identify the type of environment that makes you happy and try to create that when you're playing. Maybe you like to play at night when there are little to no distractions in your house. Or maybe you like to light your favorite candle, put on some dim lighting, and just get some cozy vibes in your place before queuing. Or maybe it's as simple as putting on your favorite playlist. Dota is a very mental game, and I think a lot of people don't acknowledge that as much as they should. I've played more than enough Dota to know that most Dota players are not very mentally equipped to handle adversity in their games. You can tell by people breaking items, feeding, or just being toxic in chat or on the mic. Don't be one of these people, please. We're playing a video game after all. Try to remember that and have fun, because if you're in a good mood and you're enjoying your time regardless of what's happening, I promise you'll perform better. I've watched and played much more than enough Dota to see this come true multiple times. I mean, don't we all remember the legendary EG vs Ehome mega creep comeback at TI6? Ehome, can they hold EG? Confident they can. Smear's coming up as well. The tier 4 is being beaten on. It begins the jump four. Samaya already going out of thin rear. No chaotic offering. And I spot the dragon first. He'll take him out. Ehome, thin rear buys back to the tier 4. Oh, the throw's going down. This alone should be enough inspiration to adopt this every game is winnable mentality. Keep the PMA. If you want to watch me live, go follow me on Twitch. I've been streaming most weekdays recently. You can join me for my new Road to 9k playing support. Come by, chat, ask questions, and hopefully you can learn something new. You should also go join my Discord where you can be notified for whenever I go live. Like I said, it's been a lot of fun having people in the chat while I play, so if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, I'd love for you to come by. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.